Hello. I chose now to start the vlog, even though it's probably terrible timing. The lighting's not good. It's getting pretty close to eight o'clock at night. I'm tired, I'm about to take a shower. Um, but I'm gonna be starting with, oh my God, I didn't prepare for this at all. So sorry. Um, Split Tooth by Tanya Shikuk because there was some interest in this book. So this is, uh, this is what we're gonna start with. I haven't really gotten into it at all. I flipped through it a little bit. It looks like there's some pictures, which is always fun. Um, I am filming on my phone and I'm not sure how that's gonna go because I don't usually film on my phone, but I thought for vlogging purposes, this would be significantly easier. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll update you tomorrow, provided I actually read anything tonight. You can see, you can see my Loki. He usually hangs out with me, so you might see him a lot. Good morning. It is about 10 a.m. on May 4th, so happy Star Wars Day, if you celebrate. Um, I read about 10 pages of Split Tooth last night, and it was interesting. Uh, I then stopped and actually read the synopsis for the first time because I kind of just bought it based on things other people said and had no idea what it was actually about. And, uh, I don't know. It says it's like part memoir and then it's like part poetry and part prose. And I'm wondering what parts are the memoir? Because uh, it's just like really heavy subject matter. And I don't know what to think about that, honestly. So anyway, that's that. The writing is beautiful. And then I, I am enjoying like the alternating between poetry and prose, which I didn't know if I would because I I'm not a poetry person, typically. There are very few poems that I have ever liked. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Basically my update, I might just let the camera roll while I do my makeup because you know, B-roll is a thing that is usually added to vlogs. Um, if you're curious, I'm getting ready to go to physical therapy right now. So, due to the whole mask situation, there will be no foundation or anything. I just get to play with eyeshadows, which is my favorite part, honestly. It's the only reason I do this. Because it's fun. I know a lot of people like do makeup because it makes them look more put together or more pretty or whatever but like I could give a shit about that. I just do it because I enjoy it.
it's me, the world's worst vlogger. Um, I finally finished Split Tooth. It is May 15th, which means it's been like at least 10 days since I filmed a clip. <laughs> Oops. Um, but I finished Split Tooth yesterday. And I don't really know how I feel about it. So the bits that are like grounded in reality, I was really on board for. But like the spiritual things lost me. I suspect that part of it is in cultural differences. Um, so I'm not going to judge it too harshly on that because like, my lack of understanding doesn't make something bad. Um, but it was, it was weird. And I'm not usually a person who enjoys poetry per se, but this was really, really beautifully written. So I'm, I'm not reading it because I just don't understand a lot of what was going on. But like I enjoyed it still. I don't I I don't know. It's it's just it's weird. If you're interested in reading it, I'd say go ahead and give it a shot. It's um I don't know. It's like poetry and prose and memoir and Ari stop barking. And and memoir, but then it's also like like a fever dream. I I don't know. Ari. I guess I'm just gonna leave all that barking in because I don't want to have to refilm this. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's kind of like a coming of age story about a girl living in Nunavut, which is very harsh Arctic-like um, climate. And it, um, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird, but beautifully written so yeah I say if if you're interested in reading it go ahead and give it a shot I don't think you'll regret it but it just it it's weird hello it is May 16th yeah May 16th and Loki please be careful uh, today I started listening to an indigenous people's history of the United States I think is what it's called um, by I can't remember hopefully I have a picture up so you can see <laughs> the cover um, this wasn't one that I had included in my TBR for this vlog but I felt like it kind of fit the theme and also I forgot I had it or else I probably would have included it um, so if I haven't said it the theme is indigenous authors and the author of this <sighs> I'm not okay it says in the introduction or the author's note or whatever at the beginning that her mother is part Indian, possibly Cherokee. So I get, I mean, she's, I don't know. What I was hoping for more with indigenous authors were people who had lived in the culture, I guess, because I'm looking for insight into other cultures. That's kind of the whole point of what I'm trying to do here. So in that sense, it doesn't really fit the theme, but also it does in a way because it gives a lot of background into why indigenous lives are the way they are today. So I'm listening to that. If, if I think about it, I might start the remove by, I think it's Brandon Hobson or Brandon Hobbs tonight. Um, and we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I just wanted to give a little bit of an update. I am gonna be working on a puzzle. I'm not sure if I can even show it to you. Anyway, I haven't gotten very far. All I did was the border. Um, this is what it looks like. It's just a mess of colors and it seems like it's gonna be a heckin' lot of fun. So I suppose I'll update you on this as well as I get going with it. Hello. I really have no book updates for you. I'm not any further than I was last time we talked, I don't think. What day is it? The 17th? I don't know. 
finals are coming up, so I'm all out of sorts because of that. I've been sat in this chair studying for almost four hours now. I've been taking breaks to edit in between, which is a lot of staring at a screen. I'm not gonna lie, it's getting a little tedious. Anyway, uh, I thought maybe I'd just do like a life update. I went to physical therapy this morning and if you haven't been around for very long and you don't know, um, I had knee surgery about two months ago and I am working with a new physical therapist now because the other one moved and I was a little bit nervous because I get weird around new people but he's great and he said I was doing excellent for being eight weeks post-op. I've been doing a lot of work at home because I want to feel better. Uh, so that's cool. Um, oh, uh, wow, I can see a mess behind me. This is like the office space. This is where my husband and I spend pretty much all of our time. So it's a mess and that's just the way it is. So yeah, anyway, I'm pretty much off the crushes now, but I think I might have to go back to them because I'm having a lot of pain when I'm walking. And so I feel like I'm hobbling more than walking and I'm not, I'm not loving that. Not even a little bit. So anyway, that's, that's that update. I don't know if anybody cares, but you know, I thought I'd tell you anyway. I'm gonna go now because biology is calling. It's gotta be like the least favorite class I've taken. I'm, I'm completely serious on that. Anyway, thanks for letting me like complain. Bye. Hello. I just popped dinner in the oven and I was gonna sit down here and work on my puzzle for a little bit. But while I was cooking, I was listening to an indigenous people's history of the United States. It's a long title and I keep getting it mixed up. So I hope I got it right that time. Um, and I, she, the author said something that I, I really liked. And that was that the settlers who came to the Americas, they did it under the guise of altruism. Like they were helping the native inhabitants. And she said that it's still the same thing America does when it goes in and meddles with other countries' affairs under the guise of helping. And I was like, oh my god, that's very true. <laughs> and I just, I thought it was interesting, so I thought I would share. Um, I also started The Removed by Brandon Hobson. I'm not very far in. I actually think I only got through the prologue. Um, I've been a little bit busy because finals are happening and there's just not been a ton of time. Um, not as much as I would like to have to read, so I should be able to get through it, I hope. Because finals should all be done by the 26th, which still gives me a few days to get through uh, the last few books that I, I want to read. So hopefully that goes well. Uh, that's pretty much my update. I'm gonna sit here and work on my puzzle now for a little bit and I will check back with you later.
are having a very lazy Friday. Loki has a toy. I don't know if you can see. Oh, yep, there it is. Ari doesn't have anything, which is surprising because typically she has her ball with her at all times. And I, I have a book. You, you trying to read with me, Loki? I should be able to finish the removed today. I've not got that much left. Um, as far as, like, what it's about, I think, you know, I've kind of already talked about how, um, the, it's about a family and their 15-year-old son gets killed in a police shooting. Where were we? Oh, yeah, 15-year-old boy, he gets killed in a police shooting, and I think we're 15 years in the future, and it's, the family's still not doing well. Um, it's hard to really gauge how well the parents are handling because the father has Alzheimer's. And so, you know, they're, they're dealing with that. And the mother is obviously trying to figure out how best to to help her husband while also giving her children what they may need. Um, the older sister is not doing well. Uh, she's in her 30s. She hasn't settled down. It doesn't appear she's going to settle down. She just seems very lost in her life. And then the younger son, um, he is a drug addict. And you kind of, and this is in the synopsis, but honestly, this isn't really the kind of book you can give spoilers for, I don't think, because there isn't any kind of plot twist. There isn't any big reveal. It's just them dealing. Um, so anyway, the, the youngest son, he has a suicide attempt. But like that's mentioned in the synopsis, but I don't, to me, it wasn't very clear in the writing itself that that's what was happening. We're just in this, what is it called, the, the Darkening Lands or something. And it's very bizarre. I'm having a hard time tracking what's going on and why. He's staying with somebody that it appears he knows. And this man is a game developer. It, it's, it's very odd. And it, I think part of the point is to point out um, Native American stereotypes because that, that like, the Edgar sections, the, the son who killed himself, they are, like, rife with people saying things that are very stereotyped. Um, and he, do, he does say things about it. It's not like it's ignored or anything. Um, and then like every three chapters so you'll have a point of view from the mother you'll have a point of view from the sister and then you'll have edgar's point of view and they're, they're kind of swapped around they're not always in that order um you have these chapters from some kind of spirit i guess i'm not totally clear on what he is but it's a lot of storytelling and i believe a lot of it surrounds roughly the time um period that the trail of tears took place so i i don't know i'm more than halfway through the book but i feel like there's so many things i'm still very confused about thank you ari that i don't i don't totally know what's going on i don't mind the writing um it's nothing exceptional it's just decent writing so i don't I don't know. I'll, I'll get back to you once I've finished. But yeah, I'm still very perplexed about a lot of things. Okay, can you stop? Like, I love you, but I just don't want all those kisses right now, okay? Thank you, though. Anyway, she brought me her ball finally, so she might want to play. So I'm going to get back to that. I'm going to read my book, play with my dog, drink my coffee. All the things. Hello friends. I am long overdue for a check-in. Long overdue. 
I finished two books. I don't even know how many days ago now. It's the 24th. And I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure I finished them on like the 21st. Look. <laughs> I'm in the middle of finals. Everything's just kind of a mess right now. Um, so the books I finished, let's, uh, let's talk. First of all, we have The Removed by Brandon Hobson. And I could grab the book, but it's far away and I'm lazy. So I won't. I'm conflicted with that book. Because it had a lot of very interesting things to say. Like, it it started on a lot of topics that there was a lot that could have been said and could have been done with them. But, like, he just kind of introduced them and then let them sit. And never went anywhere with them. So, like, I told you, I hope I told you the synopsis. Basically, we're following a family who 15 years previously, their son had been killed by a police officer. And, like, nothing really ever happened with that storyline. Like, there were two lackluster, actual, like, weird confrontations that came from that. That I wasn't expecting. And didn't... <laughs> didn't really do anything to push the story. So there's that. Um, the younger son who has a drug problem and a suicide attempt that like, it's really only made clear in the synopsis that what's happening is a suicide attempt. Um, that's never really <laughs> resolved. The ending is very ambiguous, which is fine, but the problem is all of it was ambiguous. Like, nothing really got worked out. As far as, you know, depicting a family dealing with grief, it was okay. I, I Look, I don't know. I gave it two stars. It's not the best thing I've ever read. I don't know how interested I'll be in picking up things from this author in the future. But it, like, also wasn't a terrible read. I, I don't know. There was just a lot left on the table with it that I think could have been mm, kind of expounded on more. Okay. So the other book was, oh my god, An Indigenous People's History of the United States, I think. Anytime a title gets longer than, like, three words, it gets a little sketchy as to whether or not I remember it. So I really enjoyed this. Um, it's nonfiction. I gave it four stars, and the only reason I gave it four stars instead of five stars is that you can tell there is some serious bias on the part of the author, and that's not to say that the Native Americans weren't treated abominably. It's just that she doesn't present a nuanced look at the situation. It is definitely, like, one side, which I guess is fine because... It is meant to be an indigenous people's history of the United States. The problem is, and because I was looking up some reviews, because it, it felt things fit her narrative a little too perfectly, if that makes sense. So I was looking up some reviews from people who know more than I do on the topic, and it seems that there are situations that she presents as fact in the book that actually it's not clear what happened. Yet she presented them as fact in a way that further propels her narrative forward. And that made me a little uncomfortable. Um, there were some things that almost felt anti-Semitic in nature. But I think possibly that's circumstantial. And it's because... There's been a lot of anti-Semitism being tossed around in the U.S. right now because of everything that's going on in Palestine and Israel and that mess. So it's possible that I was being a little bit sensitive just based on what's happening now. But the way she... I'm not going to say she discounted the Holocaust. I'm just going to say that... It sounds like 
she thinks people pay more attention to it than they should. Look, I don't know. I'm very conflicted. As far as, like, it being interesting and compelling read, yeah, it is. And it is something that I think a lot of people should read because it does kind of balance out the history you're taught in school, at least in the U.S. But I, I don't know. There's just... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, the last book I'm going to try to read this month, and we've not got much time left, is A Lats Away by Darcy Little Badger. I had started this one uh, months ago, and it never really clicked with me. But I'm going to try it again. I'm probably just going to pick up where I left off, because I pretty much remember what was happening, and I didn't get that far. So yeah, hopefully... I do a better job at updating you quickly this time. I'm almost done. I had my biology final this morning, I have my chem final tomorrow, and I have my stats final on Wednesday. And then I'm done. <laughs> so I'll be able to devote a little bit more time to YouTube. And that's something to look forward to. Okay, last vlog update. Um, a lot away. I can't do this. <laughs> I tried again to read it and I got like another 15 pages in and all the issues I was having uh, were actual issues and not just my, my mood at the time. <laughs> so I've heard so many people talk about how much they love this so I thought I was going to as well. But the biggest thing that just kills me is that this is written in such a juvenile tone and the character, the main character, she's supposed to be 17, but honestly she reads more like she's 12. So I don't know why they couldn't have just made her 12 and marketed this as a middle grade. Because if they had done that, I would have... I would have had different expectations and a different perspective going in, and I think I would have enjoyed it more. But I'm trying to picture this as a 17-year-old girl when the conversations and the actions that she's taking read more like a 12-year-old girl. So I can't do that. Uh, also, the... Uh, I just feel like the world building is really lacking. Like, really lacking. Um, and then they introduced a vampire and I quit. I can't. I cannot. So that's where we are with that. I give up. I still think I did pretty good overall. I read... Let's see. Uh, oh god. <laughs> Split Tooth by Tanya Tagak and I enjoyed this quite a bit. Although... I have so many conflicting feelings because this story is so many things and certain parts of it I didn't like at all and some parts of it made me uncomfortable and then other parts I adored. So I'm not rating it but if you've been interested in reading it I'd say go ahead and give it a shot because it's it's one of the most unique things I've ever read. Um, then I read The Removed by Brandon Hobson. This was not good. <laughs> There was just too much left on the table. There were so many things that were introduced that could have been explored and expounded upon. And the author just didn't do it. So I don't know what that's about. Um, yeah, I, no. No, it just, it wasn't good. The ending was ambiguous, which normally I'd be fine with, but because there was so much that could have been explored and just wasn't, it just all fell flat. And like, I don't know, so much potential here. So much potential. This feels like an early draft. Is, is what it seems like to me. Um, then I listened on audiobook to An Indigenous People's History of the United States by Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz. I think I got that right. <laughs> and that was delightful. That was probably my favorite of all the all the books. Although, if you remember, I, I'm pretty sure I have a clip where I outlined a couple issues I had with it. Um, but overall, very enjoyable, I think, especially if you live in the United States, maybe even Canada. Um, it's a good book to read to give you a different perspective than what you were taught in your American history class. Um, so that's that. I, I don't know, I have a few other books that I intend to read. Um, some of them have been recommendations. Let me see. There was one recommendation in particular that I want to I want to just note. Um, Betty by Tiffany McDaniel was a book that was recommended for me to read. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna do that. And then I also have 
what's it called? Um, is it The Only Good Indians? Yes, The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. So those are a couple that have been recommended to me that I intend to, to read just to further my introduction into various indigenous cultures. Uh, so yeah, that that's that. I didn't hate this experiment, I guess, this reading challenge, uh, but it also wasn't my favorite. <laughs> I don't know. I know that I want to explore more things because I feel like there's a lot here that I could love, but then also so much of this is based on like spirituality. And I'm just not sure that's not really my thing. I don't know. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Leave me any recommendations you have for books by indigenous authors in the comments. I am always looking. Okay. Now it is time to let me start screen recording. Hold on. To pick. We're going to we're going to do it random this time. And then I'll put together a TBR and we can talk about it. Okay, so the result is LGBT authors, or not even necessarily authors, it can just be that they have LG, like strong LGBT representation. So let's, let's see. I will do some looking at the books I have, and I will get back to you shortly. Okay, I am back. Um, I have three selections that I've made, however... <sighs> It's possible that this could change or I could add to it as kind of what happened with the uh, Indigenous Authors blog. Uh, so the plan is the three books that I'm going to mention, but if I hear about a book that I'm really interested in or if I get a new book that has an LGBTQIA plus character, then I'll probably throw that into it. But to start with, I have chosen a nonfiction book. It's called What's Your Pronoun Beyond He and She by Dennis Barron. I don't know much about this book, I just, the topic interests me, and so I thought I would give it a shot um, and, and see, see what it's about, so hopefully that's good. If anybody who's watching this has read this book, let me know what you thought about it, and if maybe I should select something else. I get a little... Mm, sometimes titles can be a little deceiving, so <laughs> if it's actually garbage, somebody please let me know if you do know. Um, and then I have two others. The first is Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides. I've heard that the main character is intersex, which I think is interesting because I can't... I'm not sure if I've ever read a book where the main character is intersex before. Not off the top of my head. So I'm gonna try this one. Hopefully this goes well. And then we have Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters. I technically already started this, but like I'm probably 40, 50 pages in. Like I'm not far at all. So this will give me a good excuse to get through this one. I really enjoy Sarah Waters. I always enjoy everything of hers I read. She just tends to have very slow paced atmospheric type books, so sometimes they take me a while to get through. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to this one. Um, our two main characters, I believe. I'm not actually sure. <laughs> it's one of those things where I'm not sure words like like lesbian were really in the vernacular, so it's hard to put a label on a character if that's not <laughs> so that's not really a label that existed at the time. Anyway, it's two women who fall in love, so. We're gone. We're just going to say that. There are two women. They fall in love. Uh, <laughs> so I'm hoping that I'll be able to get through this uh, relatively quickly. I might just start with this one since I've already started it. <laughs> so that's that. If you guys have any recommendations for books with good LGBTQIA plus representation, leave them in the comments. I'm always looking for more. I'm willing to add to this list for the vlog. Um, maybe. <laughs> It depends on how much content I end up having for the vlog, because I hate editing. So, 
So that, that's what it's going to depend on. It's going to depend on how many clips I get from the books that I've already chosen. And maybe I'll add to it, maybe I won't. But either way, love your recommendations. Please, please, please leave any that you have for me. Thank you for watching this vlog. It was my very first vlog. I'm pretty excited about it. And I'm really excited to see uh, where this next reading challenge takes me. Bye!